So um, I'm part of the Cellfeld Lab, and back in about 2015, uh, along with Stefan, I created Big Warp and have been developing and maintaining it, maintaining it ever since. So what is it? It's it's a Fiji plugin for interactive landmark-based deformable registration of volumes, and these can be huge volumes since this uh, Big Warp is built upon Big Data Viewer and ImageLib2. So the main workflow you're kind of seeing, there's two windows on the left, there's a moving image and on the right, there's a target image and users will click pairs of corresponding points in both images. And this enables them to transform the moving image to the, uh, to the fixed image on the fly. And you'll see you know, editing landmarks changes the transformation in real time. You can do things like overlay images, uh, there's, you know, tools for navigating the images, working with the landmarks, inspecting the transformation, exporting the transformation, um, and it works, of course, with any images that Fiji can open, and as well, modern trunk storage like HDF5, SAR, and N5. And so please join me next week, one week from today, um, and I'll give a how-to of how-to interest group with more details on to actually how to use it. So, um, I mean, it's an important project in my view because there are registration problems where automatic registration either just doesn't work at all, Clem is an example. Um, as well, manual registration is more accessible than automatic methods, which often require just a lot of expertise to use effectively. It's been used, uh, Big Warp has been used in Genelia for a number of projects here, or just some of them, and these span a few different modalities, like there's EM, there's LM, there's uh, expansion microscopy here, there is light sheet imaging here. Uh, as well, Big Warp has been used a bunch uh, in a few groups outside of Genelia. As well, I'm particularly excited about number four here, which is a software project uh, and it uses the Big Warp code and integrates it with another popular piece of software, QPath. So, um, you know, it's I found Big Warp to be valuable and useful already, but of course, there's a lot of places that it could be improved. And the main barrier, I think, it's just been time uh, for these improvements to be realized. So I'm really grateful for this effort and Janelia's commitment to software. So um, I'd like to think about these fair principles, findable accessibility, interoperability, and reproducibility in, in the context of scientific software. So here, just for the rest of the talk, some ideas about how we can make Big Warp more fair. So first, some relatively low effort, like things that I think would go a long way, and then some more involved, potentially higher risk things uh, near the end. So of course, documentation. Um, there are some features that are just not documented or not documented well enough. Um, creating tutorials helps a lot. Um, I've done a bunch of work, uh, but mostly on the most common workflows. But you know, the second, third, and fourth most common tasks are not all that rare, and uh, I haven't really covered or documented well. Um, and as well, I think fleshing out documentation for developers um, is valuable in making the community of developers um, wider and getting more contributions from that community would, would help a lot in my view. So uh, related to accessibility uh, and findability, you know, often, especially with the in Genelia projects, people will ask for a particular feature or a particular kind of analysis. And it's quick to just write a quick Fiji script, but it's a lot less quick to integrate that useful feature into the main UI. So here, for example, there's two, two pieces of functionality that I've written already, but are scripts and are difficult to run and are also difficult to find because they're not in the UI, right? So integrating this kind of stuff into the UI would make things, I mean, one, easier to find for people and two, more accessible. That is now every user will be able to do a useful analysis. So there's also UI stuff. So I, this is what the current the dialog box that pops up if you want to export an image and one there's just a lot of information here on the left and one i made it i made it, i tried very hard that if you just press okay on this dialog it will do the right thing like for 95 90 to 95% of people but it's also pretty intimidating and i don't like the fact that a new user has to look at all of this stuff just to export an image. As well, for this, for example, there's a field of view option here. These are, I think there's eight choices here. Um, many of them are described on the wiki page. Not all of them are described on the wiki page. And for example, when I made the screenshot yesterday, I forgot why 
there's these two, for example. So if I don't know what these do, no one can know what they do. So making the UI, I think, more intuitive and describing the parts of it better would go a long way to making the tool more usable. So interoperability is key too. I think this is maybe part of where Big Warp is the weakest now. So um, specifically, <clears throat> Big Warp has to control all of the transformations that it does now. And it would be wonderful if it could import and export transformations from other tools like vanilla Big Data Viewer and Track EM2, for example, which are in our ecosystem. That is, our lab contributes to these two tools and yet they don't interact well. Um, but even more, like that would be an even stronger impact would be tools that are outside of the ecosystem, like Elastics, uh, which is a popular automatic registration uh, algorithm. And to be able to import and export displacement fields, actually Big Warp already can export displacement fields, but um, to be able to adopt common standards um, would be very valuable in reducing a lot of the friction that happens when you as a software developer have to data munge in order to get information from one piece of software to another, which is very difficult at the moment in the registration world. Um, and just again, briefly, here are some more higher effort, higher risk ideas that we had. So one, um, we might find an automatic way to generate some initial landmarks for Big Warp. Um, and this would help a bunch because it's often easier to fine tune a decent registration than to start from scratch. Um, it would also be great to enable users to interact with and concatenate sort of a sequence of transformations. Um, and actually Marwan, who's here in the SEA has a prototype of this, which I'm really excited about. Um, it would also be really nice to develop a user interface so that um, users of Big Warp could run automatic tools like Elastics or others. Um, there's actually a prototype of this in that uh, reference four of outside of Genelia. So we have a place to start for, for this number three task as well. Uh, and maybe most pie in the sky is number four, which is to find a way to describe parameters of automatic methods using terms that can be understood and interpreted by non-experts. Um, so for example, what I see now is overwarped or underwarped and to have a knob that, that has some decent idea of how to change some specific parameters of an algorithm uh, in response to this kind of user input. This is very pie in the sky, but I hope would happen because as I said, automatic registration is very inaccessible in my view at the moment. Um, as well, I've been asked a few times about uh, enabling 2D to 3D registration, um, which Big Warp can't do in a nice way right now. It can do 2D to 2D or 3D to 3D, but um, Again, I've been asked about this a few times and it would be nice to be able to include as well. Um, and I'll leave it that. Uh, here are a bunch of people who've contributed and helped me with Big Warp already. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot, John.